Although deprived of freedom, detainees still have rights. IHL affords protection to captured combatants, prisoners of war, as well as civilians. In 2003, ICRC staff visited more than 460,000 prisoners of war and other detainees around the world in places such as Nepal, Rwanda, Colombia and Guantanamo Bay. This is an important part of the ICRC's work. ICRC delegates visit prisoners and register their names. Repeat visits help prevent disappearances and ill treatment. Through ongoing dialogue, the ICRC attempts to persuade prison authorities to guarantee humane living conditions and uphold respect for the lives and dignity of detainees. Building confidential dialogue with individual prisoners is an important part of the ICRC's work. Family contact is vital. The ICRC organizes Red Cross messages and where possible family visits. For example, the ICRC and the Philippines Red Cross help relatives make their yearly visit to detainees. IHL demands that prisoners of war are released as soon as hostilities end. Between Eritrea and Ethiopia, for example, the ICRC worked to secure the return of several hundreds of POWs over recent years. too easily rips families apart. Red Cross messages provide much needed family news when all other means of communication have broken down. Distributed by the ICRC as well as National Red Cross and Red Crescent societies, these messages bring personal news and hope. ICRC continues to work hard to restore broken family links and ease anguish and suffering. At the height of the conflict in Iraq, for example, the ICRC and Iraqi Red Crescent made satellite phones available to those family members torn apart by the conflict. Such immediate communication brings much needed contact between loved ones. But sometimes, more established means of communication work just as well, such as posting lists of names for families searching for news. The ICRC does everything possible to reunite families, especially the most vulnerable, such as separated children. Tragically, many people have to wait a long time for news of loved ones. Sometimes this carries on years after a conflict has ended. The ICRC insists on respect for IHL in that families have a right to know the fate of missing relatives. In real terms, in helping to respond to the needs of families, the ICRC tries to find out as much as it can about the fate of missing men, women and children. This can take different forms, such as consulting with organizations carrying out forensic work, or collating a book of belongings so that family members may be able to recognize personal items vital for identification. The ICRC is also active in reminding authorities of their responsibilities. It's important that families know the whereabouts of missing relatives, if not to be reunited, then at least to be able to grieve. The Ottawa Treaty banning anti-personnel mines, adopted in 1997, has saved thousands of lives. This treaty has reinforced humanitarian law, which limits the methods and means of warfare and prohibits unnecessary suffering. But even after all mines have been destroyed and cleared, victims of mines will continue to need assistance. This too is part of the work of the ICRC. In 2003, for example, Specially trained ICRC staff helped more than 30,000 people rebuild their lives. But mines are just part of the problem. 
unexploded artillery shells, mortar and cluster bombs continue to destroy both lives and livelihoods long after a conflict has ended. The ICRC works with communities to help build an understanding of the lethal nature of landmines and unexploded munitions. ICRC legal experts have successfully worked with states and civil groups to achieve a new international agreement addressing the problem of explosive remnants of war. Recent advances in biotechnology hold great promise for humanity, but also great risks. History shows that scientific advances have almost always been used in warfare. In response, the ICRC is pursuing its Biotechnology, Weapons and Humanity Initiative, an attempt to bring governments, industry and scientists together to ensure that advances in biotechnology will only be used for the benefit of humanity. But working towards limiting the effects of weapons is only one aspect of the work of the ICRC. The basis for all activities throughout the world for today and tomorrow is founded in international humanitarian law. Rules and laws that regulate the behavior of all parties to a conflict. Neutral, independent humanitarian action must be maintained. That action, after all, helps reduce suffering. <laughs>